Ani and I'm working as a mobile developer at Curve Tomorrow. It's an Australian based health healthcare startup. Uh, and my topic for today is let's sing the assay. But before I go there, I want to tell you a story. So once upon a time, I was working with an Indonesian startup, Vogue uh, uh, Private Limited, and uh, we it was basically a startup like Paytm but for Indonesia. So user had a wallet balance, and using that balance, he could do different activities like. Uh, uh, selling of uh, recharges, doing insurance services, uh, and uh, uh, different things. So, user needed a dashboard. So, I started uh, researching the best practices using which you know we can make the dashboard because dashboard involved uh, hitting many APIs and then getting the response of all the API and then showing it together on one component. So, my first attempt was. Uh, uh, I started making uh, one function at a time, so I was uh, creating function for everything, every API, and then putting everything inside one component. But then I realized that uh, that um, my component is becoming really complex, and it's really difficult to understand the code. And I have more bugs in my component and than than the features. So uh, I was looking for something which you know, which is more modular, and then. Uh, which is which is has a cleaner approach to fix this. So I continued my research and then I uh, I came across Redux. Basically, I knew that in my application I needed the state in multiple places. The same day state will be required in multiple places, multiple components. So I Redux is something which gives you gives gives us that. So I uh, said that okay, I'll go with Redux as an architecture, and then uh, I I was still looking for something to to handle side effects. That is, uh, hitting the API calls. How can I make that possible in Redux? Then I, I wanted some solution which is uh, you know uh, more readable, and uh, we were very much focused on testing. So it should be easy to test as well. Uh, so. First, I started understanding the Redux architecture. Basically, you have a component which uh, which doesn't uh, which will dispatch an action for anything it wants to do. Suppose it it wants a user data, so it'll say, "Get me the user data." That will become an action, and that goes to reducer, and the reducer will process it, gives the new state back to the store, and then store will give it to the component. Uh, and component will get the user data and then it will update itself. So component is always listening to store. As soon as the store gets update, the component gets also update. That's like a, uh, you can say, high view of Redux. After that, uh, after I got into Redux, I was looking for the uh, solution for handling the API and I came across two libraries that time, Redux Thunk and Redux Saga. So I had a look into Redux Thunk. Basically, you get uh, rather than dispatching a normal action, your, uh, uh, your normal object, your action can dispatch a fun, uh, can return a function which has access to dispatch, dispatch and state. So you can uh, you can wait uh, wait for some time. You can hit the API and wait for some time, and then you can dispatch any action you want, and you can also get access to the state. But the problems were with this were like as I had to perform more and more complicated op operations like uh, suppose one of my APIs uh, waiting for another API to return the response. My I was falling into the callback hell, and uh, the code was very becoming really difficult to read, and also uh, the testing were was too complicated. So I was wishing like. Uh, what I want to do is I want to have a function which you know can execute the API uh, hitting task for some time and then wait and then again after some time it should continue the next task. So I was I I was thinking like if there should be something which you know which run and then wait and then run again. So then I came across Saga. So Saga is basically that it, it gave me the control over. Um, over hitting like hitting the API and then waiting and then executing the next function. <coughs> it is basically a, a library middleware which uh, handles the data fetching and uh, data fetching and impure things task and then and it also makes your uh, uh, 
this uh, your application really easier and the code is re really easy and you can understand it by looking into the code. So, and how does it does it that? Uh, it uses the ESX fun uh, generator functions. Uh, it has something called Saga FX. You can consider it as a methods or instructions to middleware. And uh, my action remains pure. Like uh, Sagas are really different. Uh, uh, you, you have it in a separate file. So your action remains pure. So I'm going to talk about all these in a bit. So I was really excited for my journey. So I hope you are too. So let's start the journey. So back to the problem. Uh, I had to create a dashboard, right? So uh, the dashboard had uh, uh, required hitting get user, load balance, uh, load banner, and transaction details. So first it needed the get user, and then all the other APIs were depending on the get user res response. So first need it I, as Saga uses generator, I had to learn the generator basics. So I started writing, uh, understanding it. So if you see this function. Normally, whenever we have function, uh, what we expect it to return the uh, inside whatever it's there inside it immediately. But as sagas are different, whenever you uh, encounter a function with that star, it's a generator function. And for 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 now, just uh, uh, don't focus on the e. So uh, when when I when I should run this function, I should get the console log. But as generator are different. Uh, uh, when you run them, it returns something called iterator. So iterate, you can iterate over your functions. You can say, so uh, I am right. I'm right. I'm writing the get people function, and I'm getting get greeting people. That's an iterator. And if I want to iterate over this, I will have to use dot, dot next. So when I do dot next on this um, on this iterator, I get the response and an object which tells me value, which means if that statement has anything to return. And done means if I have more code to execute. So if you see, I didn't get the second console log because there is a yield in between. Yield means pause. Pause at that execution until it calls dot next again. So if I want to call, uh, execute the next part, I will have to call again dot next on that iterator. So I'll call it and I get the response. And if you see the object, it says done is equals to true. That means your function is, is completed. So that's how you understand the how generator is working. Then I started uh, writing the reducer. So I wrote the dashboard reducer and uh, uh, I was looking into, uh, basically I wrote a simple reducer that when you, whenever you get uh, dashboard success action, Whatever state it is giving, you update the state so that my dashboard gets updated. And I was, uh, and if uh, I was looking into where the sagas lives actually in the code base, so uh, that's you can see there. Uh, in the architecture, I wanted to look like how the saga is uh, related with the Redux architecture. So basically, when your component dispatch an action, your reducers are listening to all the action. Same way, your sagas are also listening to the action. So whatever action you dispatch. The server can listen to it and and uh, perform any operation you want. So we'll we'll see in, in a bit. So I spoke about Saga effects. How that how Saga does that? How it listen to everything and and performs is basically using Saga effects, which are bas which are basically the instructions to the middleware. So I started learning more about it. First was take every and take less latest. So. Uh, whenever an action gets dispatched, I want to know about it. So uh, you can use take every uh, to listen to every action it is getting dispatched. It basically has the first argument as uh, which takes the tax, uh, action. And the second one is the fetch user, which is basically a method we're dealing with hitting the API and getting the response. So it's, that's an async method. So. Uh, I'm doing that uh, take every, yield take every, and every time and this fetch user requested action gets dispatched, it will call that method. <coughs> oh, and the take letters will do the same, but what is the difference here is whenever, suppose I'm dispatching fetch user requested, my API is running, and I'm dispatching again the fetch user requested. In case of take latest, it is going to cancel the previous one. In, as you see in the diagram. So it will always return you the response of the latest uh, request. So that's the difference between them. 
then uh, I looked into take. Take is basically take every and take action or continuously listening. But if you want more control over uh, listening to the action, you can look into, you can use take. Take basically take only the single action and then it stops. So uh, you can use it in different ways. Put the same like dispatch. It dispatches the act, act, action. Get gives gives you like the state. You can access the state using select. Sorry, so you can uh, access the state using select. So let's see the example how how this is working. So suppose you have an example where you a uh, user has created th to dos and after creating three to dos. Uh, you want to show a congratulation message to the user. So if you look into the code, uh, I'm putting, uh, what I want to do here is, I want to take an action, which is to do create it, and I want to take it for three times. So I put it inside of all loops. It will basically will wait until, uh, until these, uh, I've received the action for this three times. Uh, after I've received it, I'm selecting the state from the, uh, from the store. And then user because I want to know which user it is, and then I'm putting it into into the uh, I'm using put dispatch the action to the store that he I've I've got, show the congratulation message to the user. So that's how it works the saga. If you if you look into the code, it's really easy to understand by looking into the code what exactly is happening. That's in one of the advantage of sagas. So uh, there were more uh, effects. Uh, Suppose you want to run an API. We, uh, so basically to run an API uh, fun a function which has an async task in, in it. So you use two, met two effects, which is one is call and one is poke. So call is basically blocking and poke is not non-blocking. Uh, let's see the example and we'll get more into this. So in this example, what I want, I'm doing is, uh, I'm taking a login request Okay, it's it's very common example. We have a login request, and the user is getting logged in. But uh, uh, so I'm doing that call, and I'm passing the authorized method, which will which is responsible for uh, uh, hitting the API and getting the response. And after that, that I can pass the parameters whatever I want to the uh, call method. So in if I use call, it will not move to the next line until it is finished execution the authorized, hitting the authorizing API. In during the same time, if suppose user changed his mind and he wants to log out to the app, the component will dispatch a logout action, but as call is blocking, it will it, it will ignore the logout and it will be into a it uh, it will not be into a good state. So if you want to deal with such things, you use fork instead of call. So fork is non-blocking. So if you if you will use fork in this case, uh, the fork will create a new thread in which the authorize uh, function will get executed and it will call the API, it will get a response. And if in between the logout is, and then it will go to the next line and wait for the logout action to come. As soon as the logout is coming in between, it will log out the user and clear whatever you want to do after that. Uh, so that was like the basics of uh, Saga effects, which uh, I like I got, and then uh, now I register the Saga into the like I created the Saga. I needed two Sagas for for this uh, the load user and then that dashboard. Now you say a lot about uh, Priti. You spoke a lot about Saga Saga. Show show me the Sagas. How you wrote the load user and the dashboard. So uh, let's look into the load user. So what it should do basically is. Um, it should call the get user API, and then anytime you uh, you uh, once you get a success response, it should dispatch a success method, otherwise a failure one. So that's what we are doing here. Uh, we want to wait. So yield is wait for uh, get user to finish, and I'm I'm making it a blocking one. Uh, then a call I told you that is a blocking effect. Then uh, once I got the response. I'm dispatching the put is dispatching the fetch user success uh, action and then if I got any error in between I'm dispatching fail action. This was quite simple. The complicated a bit complicated version was the dashboard one. The, there I had to uh, get first I wanted to wait once the user dispatches happen you fetch user success is being done I want what I wanted to do is hit three APIs get the response of it and then show it to the user so that's what I'm doing here so 
uh, I would like uh, yield take wait for the uh, use fetch user success action once you get it select the state user state from the store then call three different APIs call first load balance pass because load bar load banner and load banks all these th APIs were dependent on the user so pass the user to them and once you get all the three responses you dispatch an action that I got the uh, uh, that I got all the data and update the dashboard. So uh, this was like the if if you now look at the code, it's it's really simple when you look. If any any other developer will come and look into your code, they will uh, just by looking at it, they'll understand what exactly is going on. So that's an example. That's an advantage why why we liked using Sagas. So and uh, I was thinking like that's fine. I'm using call there, but. And in any there's any way I can make my previous example any any, bet, any better. So uh, I came across one more uh, effect which was all. So uh, as all the three calls, load banner, balance, and transaction details doesn't have to wait for the each other to finish. So what I did is I put everything inside uh, yield all, and now all the three will start executing at the same time. And once everything gets finished. I get the response and I, it will go to the next line and uh, dispatch an action to the dashboard at the hey, I've got all uh, the I've all got all the state. You just update yourself, update the component. So uh, you will say, Piti, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I, I get it. You get the readability, but what else? What uh, what what is what is the other advantage of using Saga? So there's one more thing which is which is uh, which I liked really. A lot, which is task cancellation. Uh, as a developer, you have to f f face a lot. Like uh, suppose you have started some task due to some reason, you want to you know cancel the task. So if you are into like into a callback hell, it is di really difficult to identify which task uh, you want to cancel. So uh, let's see the example how ca task cancellation happens in Sagas. Uh, suppose I start a background uh, sync task. And in like uh, every day it should sync at a particular time, which is like very common use case these days. Uh, so after that, once it starts syncing, sometimes if suppose user logs out or any or due to any event, I want to cancel the syncing. So how will I do that in Sagas? So uh, I'll wait for background syncing task action to happen. Once I get that, uh, uh, you, I'll start the Fork, remember the fork, it's non-blocking, so I'll start the background sync API in the background and then uh, it will go to the next line and it will wait for the background syncing cancel. Once it, get, it, it, it gets the action that he canceled the background syncing, it, uh, uh, the fork basically returns you the task so you can store it in a variable and then all you have to do is just cancel that background. I've, here I have stored in background sync task so I, I'm just cancelling that. Uh, and not only that, uh, whenever you cancel this task, so uh, if you see this BG sync generator method, uh, whenever I get cancelled, I'll get an event there in the finally that hey, you got uh, you got cancelled. If you want to do any any cleanup, you can do that in that. So that's really really useful. So that's it. That's all about Saga. But uh, what about testing? So we like we want to obviously test this and I said as I said that testing is really important. So all when you when you want to test uh, Redux Saga, uh, it's really easy. You have to remember these rules and then you'll be just uh, it it is really it becomes really easy. So what you have to do is as I told you that generator. Generator doesn't uh, returns you any. It returns an iterator. So you store a generator into a variable. You call dot next method on it. Then it will return you an object with a value and done equals to false. So take that value and just use expect and compare what you are expecting it to be. And uh, if if done is true, that means you have reached to the end and then you don't have to test anything more. So let's. Consider the dashboard scenario which we saw earlier. So in this, I'm just uh, going to test the first one that on the whenever that whenever a fetch user success cache gets dispatched, uh, I should uh, it my generator should 
yield uh, te- take effect. So let's see that. So the fir- as, as I said, the first rule is store your generator into a variable, then call dot next on it, take the value, you have the actual value, which will be a take effect. So that's that's the advantage here. The, here the effects are basically what they return is an object which are like instruction to middleware. So you can directly compare the effects value and with the expected. Like here I'm expecting a take effect. I can write that and just compare it like that. You can expect all the effects with proper value parameters and then test your scenarios. So that's it. Uh, I'll I'll just want to conclude here that. Suppose you you have a complex, uh, if you don't have a too complex flow, there's no need to go with uh, Redux Saga. You can do your things with Redux, using Redux Thangs as well. But if you want to, uh, if you have very complicated flow and you're dealing with a lot of API calls which are interdependent, <coughs> you should uh, definitely try out Redux Saga. And there is a learning curve when you're dealing because you have to understand a lot of concepts like generator, and how they are working and but i think this talk would have made it a bit easier so in any case you, you should write your test if you're not writing because writing test is really important and if we have a testing bof as well so you should, if you are interested to know more about it you should definitely join that's it thank you thank you everyone for your time